This is Coogan Cassis for IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. We're at Trinity House to announce Lawrence O'Coy's next world title defence on Feb 27th at the O2. Sunday night boxing, Lawrence. Your idea? Uh, no, it wasn't my idea, but I'm, I'm happy to do it. Um, on paper, uh, Eddie Hearn said that, well, I think you made the paper reference, but Eddie Hearn saying that this is going to be the toughest challenge of your career. So is that a fair point? Uh, we can only find out on the on the day, you know, different fights would have been hard at different points in my career, um, but I've, I'm developing and have developed to, you know, obviously world level. Um, so I should, my aim is to handle it comfortably, you know, I think as soon as it becomes a war or a hard, hard fight, it means that me and that person are on similar levels. I don't think we are, I think that I'm at least one, maybe two levels above, so I'm just going to show that properly. His sole defeat in his career has only come to uh, Macabre. Yeah. Um, did you watch that fight? Yeah, I've watched it. I've watched it a couple of times, uh, a little bit. I watched it. I thought I was going to box the same guy for the world title uh, in December of 2020. So I was aware of him already. Um, watched the fight since. It's difficult because I can't watch that fight and think how he's going to box me because Makabu is a completely different stature and style. He's southpaw. Um, but I watched it just to see, you know, how durable he is, how, f how fit he looks in round nine, you know, th those sort of questions. And, you know, he ticked all the boxes. So I, I expect it to be a, a physically hard fight, but um, I expect to show some, some different, different nuances in the ring. Lawrence, prior to this announcement, you kind of put out a tweet about your next fight being a heavyweight. Was that just, what was that, boredom? Was there something being spoken about? No, it was genuinely, that was, that was what I started angling towards because, you know, um, I turned professional and said I'm going to be a world champion in four years and interview with you. Managed to do it before the next Olympics. Then I said I want to unify. And I realised that it's actually not up to me. It's up to um, the other champions to say yes to taking fights against me. Um, and I saw a lot of, you know, hearsay and, you know, no, no one, nothing really materialised. And I was thinking I could keep defending, have a hard fight against Cezak, or I could move up to heavyweight and have some hard fights there, but I get to eat a bit more. So I, I was leaning towards that. But once the Cezak fight got announced, I thought, OK, cool, I'll um, do my due diligence and, um, yeah, to handle business. Well, what has been your summary, summary sorry, of this whole Marius Bradis situation? Um, obviously, we know kind of the bizarre lengths he's going to to grab the attention of Jake Paul, but what have you kind of made of all this? Uh, it's sad. It's just really, really sad. You know, um, I have a fight that I have to focus on, so I don't want to say too much. Um, but it's disappointing, you know, and it just really, that's where you start to say that boxing's taken a little bit of an L, you know, as a whole. When a professional world champion, one of the best in his weight class, um, definitely the most accomplished at the weight, is literally getting tattoos of 3 0 novice former YouTuber slash fighters. It just goes to, you know, it goes to show the state of boxing in his mind. You know, he says he's doing it to clean up the sport, but if anything, he's putting it under, you know, some. So it's a, a, a negative light, really. I know, obviously, you're focused on Feb 27th, and th that is your sole focus, uh, and nothing else before that. But are you kind of losing a little bit of faith with the prospect of a fight with Breedis? Yeah, but for me, I, I just take it one fight at, at a time. I obviously have the end goals of unifying and, you know, going down as one of the best cruiserweights to come out of Britain and all these things. But... I just take it one step at a time. So the next one is Seas like, and God willing, I'm able to get past that. We'll see what the world looks like. But, you know, I, I'm realising now as I'm getting older, it is actually getting harder to make the way. I did, I generally, people always said it. I thought, nah, no. But, you know, I get further and further away from the um, weight every, every camp. So it's like, you know, um, I, I don't know how long I'm going to be able to stay at the weight for. And if these champions don't want to fight, it's like, it's, it depends. It depends on um, what happens. Like, you know what I mean. I might end up just dropping a belt and then be, become a mandatory for one of these guys if, if that's the only way to get these fights. It's, just, it's really like I'm really up for seeing, you know, what what the world looks like on the other side of a victory. We know the plan. Obviously, when you won the world title, was kind of the, the the process of unification. And then, if you could, but it's very difficult to kind of manoeuvre yourself in all them governing bodies. But if you were to move too heavyweight without unifying at cruiserweight yeah. as a minimum for you because I know that when you won the world title that was yeah. one step on the ladder for you yeah. but would you be satisfied if you made that move but you didn't uh, 
you didn't unify? It really would depend on what happens when I move up to heavyweight. Um, I'd be satisfied in the fact I've won a world title. It's, it's an amazing accomplishment. Um, but I wouldn't be satisfied in the, in the fact that I see Josh Taylor, I see Uzik, I see um, um, Terence Crawl, etc. with the belts. You know the pictures when they have multiple belts? AJ, and I just think to myself, one, come on, just one time, one, at least one on each shoulder, it would be nice, but uh, if not possible, then, you know, um, it's just not meant to be and we'll just push on with other things. I'm sure people do realise who kind of know boxing how, when we get these undisputed fights, or even three belts, how difficult it is to actually get fighters in contention to be fighting for that. Yeah. No, it's a di and I'm realising now it's a difficult process. I generally thought it was la di da da picked up a world title on my Like Canelo team. did. Yeah, that, that's no, a one-off, okay, though. That's, that's a, a little bit of a one-off, yeah, though. Yeah, but you've got to obviously understand the same way with YouTubers, same with Anthony Joshua, Tyson Fruit, um, and Canelo, is that they've got so much star power and so much money that, like, for example, if I offered um, the, the, um, the champions, Bradis, Gilmar, what, um, Maccabi, a lot of money, they would all be up for the fight. They'll be right here in this press conference right now going for it. But when you can't offer that kind of money and you can offer just great money, but a hard, potentially hard fight, it's like, you know, I'll just box a YouTuber if I can, or I'll just box a mandatory and keep doing Like I could have boxed a much, much lesser opponent than the guy I'm boxing now. This guy's a hard fight, you know, I'm going to try and make it easy. That's my job. But he's like right number maybe five across like at least number five across all the governing bodies he's coming game he's here you know he's i've been watching all the interviews i don't understand the word i don't understand the word, but i've been watching them nonetheless just to see the comments and if i can pick up my name or i don't know what's but i see them in their game they're up they're thinking he's beaten you know a, a polish fight in the olympics um then igor um who, who me and him are still quite friendly then i beat jizweki um, before I was meant to box Glowacki, then I beat Glowacki, and now he's like the last one that they're pushing forward. Um, you can get him. And this is the one that they think. So it's up to me to really stamp my authority on the fight, take it very seriously. Because one thing, I, don't, I know I'm rambling, sorry, but one thing that I find is that as much as I'm dedicated and I think, is when you're a world champion, it's a different feeling from when you're chasing it. It's when, when I was chasing it, it was, oh my God. Now it's like I have to maintain it, but it's a different thing because I, that, not that I, like I had to, I have to snap out of the sort of comfortability and that sort of thing of being like, I'm the champ, I got this. Because then you see him and you, you hear him, and it's good. That's why press conferences are good. You can hear him say, I'm training hard, I'm coming for it. He's looking at me like this. Every now and again, we made some eye contact. So, you know, it's giving me a little bit extra life for the remainder of camp. OK, um, Feb 27th, yep, like I said, Sunday night boxing, uh, literally exactly a month away, so uh, good card at the O2. And also, just a final word, Chevron Clark making his uh, professional debut. He, I don't think he was sort of looking towards no, you. I no. think he was just responding he's looking, to any... looking at the other guy, 100%. But in terms of me, like, no, but Chevron, like, he's, he's someone that I've known for years. He's a really um, good fighter, good... Like, he'll be a tough fight for... Anyone, do you know what I'm saying? All, all, that any, all that these guys need is a bit of experience as professionals. That four years ago, I was in the exact same position. Now I'm here. It's not impossible for any of, any of them. Like I sparred a guy recently who's, who I think is really good, um, um, David. Uh, I don't want to mispronounce his surname, but he think, I think he got a bronze medalist. Him, he came, gave me some great work, and I'll be hoping to have him along for the rest of the camp. So um, it's all good work. Okay. Is that a new watch? This one here, yeah, it's obviously um, for the rap career. I um, have to just specify that. Um, and yeah, I'm obviously doing a music video straight after this, so I have to just make sure that I say that. Okay. All right. Have you still got the, the other one? Yeah, of course. Of course. That one will be there until, you know, past. You can't time. really sell that, can you? Yeah, it's, that's the reality. Yeah. Sometimes you don't want to think about how much money have I made and, and look at what I have to strike that one off as just a, a gift. It's gone up to about say. 80 grand, though. And I <laughs> no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was a joke. I don't know they've gone to 80 grand. It's a green face days only you should have got. Oh, what? You know what? You live and you learn. Um, God willing, I'm able to keep winning. Who knows? Who knows? You know? Who knows? Lawrence Cully, thank you very much for to Eiffel TV. We'll definitely catch up with you. Um, well, we'll probably be in fight week now because it's not long away. Yeah. So, yeah, if you're not there at the O2, tune into the zone. That's it. Big source. I'm made for this. I'll call you fit.